Welcome back to Box Reveal. This is actually the first episode that I have filmed in several months. In fact, it's the first episode that I have filmed so far this year, and it occurred to me that this is now the third year in which I have filmed episodes of Box Reveal. So I'm going to dub this episode Season 3, Episode 1. I'm going to be talking about a few things tonight. I'm going to be talking about Broncos and Giants. We'll get to that later. We've got a great box reveal tonight. 16 early 70s Hong Kong black shoe teams. But up front, we're going to discuss what you're looking at now. Super Bowl V. I'm going to span the field here. This is a great 1971 Tudor Electric Football Super Bowl V field. Super Bowl V was kind of an interesting Super Bowl. The game itself was played on January 17, 1971. The game was played at the Orange Bowl and the Colts played in it. And that is significant because Super Bowl III was also played at the Orange Bowl and also featured the Colts. Uh, it's hard to believe it's the same field when you look at those old film clips of these games. And the main reason is because the game, the field, had been given an AstroTurf makeover uh, in the time in between. So it looks like a very different place when you watch highlights of Super Bowl V versus Super Bowl III. Now, the Colts were obviously looking for redemption. But one question is, how in the world did the Colts end up representing the AFC in the Super Bowl when they represented the NFL in Super Bowl III? The answer to that question is this. 1970, the season that led up to Super Bowl V, was actually the first combined AFL-NFL season. Now, when those teams got together on the field and made the National Football Conference and the American Football Conference, uh, the newly combined NFL did have one little problem. I'm going to get out some of these pieces and parts while I'm talking. That problem was... The AFL had 10 teams, while the NFL had 16 teams. Therefore, it became necessary for three NFL teams to move over to the newly formed AFC. Apparently, the NFL even paid, we've got some bases here, a little bit of everything. The NFL even paid three of the franchises $1 million a piece to make the switch. Three teams took that bait, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, and last but not least, the Baltimore Colts. All right, we've got some great pieces here. I'm always talking about these toggle bolts. Those are so good to have. In fact, I'm going to show you why those are so important to have. Hopefully I can do this. Without these little yellow bolts, you cannot hold these field goal posts in place. You've got to have them. There we are. Very, very important. Without those little yellow bolts, these field goal posts just slump loose in the hole and are basically useless. It's really the equivalent of using these yard markers without the magnets. Without the magnets, they really aren't much good. This is also interesting. What do we have here? Oh, very good. What a great idea. I was always losing and am still always losing the little footballs. So we got a great little case to keep them in. All right, another great part of this game. The Cowboys and Colts themselves. Now getting back to this game. <clears throat> this game, if you've ever watched the game or seen the highlights of it, it was a really messy affair. It was poorly played. There were a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of penalties and a ton of turnovers. In fact, the Colts actually committed seven turnovers in the game, 
and still won the most turnovers ever committed by a team that actually won the Super Bowl. Uh, amazing in its own right. 11 Hall of Famers in the game. Only three on the Colts side. John Mackey, Johnny Unitas, and Ted Hendricks still with the Colts back then. So, and I see some broken arms. Got a couple broken arms here. Eight, ding -a -dang, got another broken arm. Well, the Colts are a little dinged up. And I'm gonna bring one close to the camera so you can get a good look at them. All right. Well, there's our first team of the night. We've got 11 Baltimore Colts, the team that won the Super Bowl on this field. In fact, looking at that logo out in the middle, this was the last year they used that large Vince Lombardi trophy in the middle of the field this way. These two helmets were actually not here. They did do the two helmets uh, for Super Bowl IV, and I'm guessing that Tudor probably had that existing template and just switched uh, those helmets, putting the NFL logo on them. Another first of this game, while we look at the Cowboys, this was the only Super Bowl in which a player from the losing team was named MVP, and that was Chuck Howley of the Cowboys. He picked off a couple of passes. I'm going to bring a Cowboy up close for you to look at. Oh, we got a funny slumping arm. I bet you that's a re-glued arm there. Yeah, that's a re-glued arm. Well, aside from that re-glued arm, the other 10 Cowboys all look great. The game was so sloppy. You would think that the Colts would have gotten some great redemption out of this game. They felt that they should have won Super Bowl three, and they got back there two years later. Uh, but they played so poorly despite winning the game that even Bubba Smith refused to wear a Super Bowl V ring because he was just completely disgusted with the way that he played in the game. Ultimately, the Colts, by the way, who were losing this game going into the fourth quarter, made a great comeback to win the game. They actually won the game with five seconds remaining on a Jim O'Brien field goal. The Colts had been favored by two and a half and won by three, so they won the Super Bowl and covered the spread. Not a bad day's work. One other thing I want to mention about Super Bowl V while I'm at this moment. It was the first Super Bowl to feature a flyover, and that is very apropos for this particular box because I got this box from a gentleman named Mark. And Mark serves with the 910 airlift wing, which is just five miles from my house. That base features C-130 transport planes, and they fly over my house all the time. They're a great source of local pride. And I want to say, Mark, again, thank you for the box, and thank you for your service. And to everyone at the 910, thank you for your service. Uh, also, another thing I want to mention, as long as I'm making some quick acknowledgments, while I'm holding these figures up and spinning them around, that wasn't my idea. That idea actually came from one of our viewers, Jeff Connecticut. Jeff sent me a message and said, why don't you lift those guys up close to the camera and give them a spin so we can get a good look at them. That's a great idea, Jeff. And Jeff also was the person who properly identified this object. Episode 26, I asked, what is this thing? It's a line of scrimmage separator. Now you can see mine is pretty warped. First one I've ever seen in real life. And Jeff was the person who identified that. And we are now looking at a nice set of and pasty Oakland Raiders. Worth pointing out, by the way, 
The Colts and Cowboys are obviously early black shoe teams. They both have the good skin tones. All the rest of the teams we're going to see all have the pasty skin tones. So those two teams came with the game. They ordered other teams later. The transition to the pasty skin tones had happened. And here we are. And there's our first team we're looking at. Oakland Raiders, dark uniforms. They're in perfect condition, no breaks. I don't see any re-glues. Couple of bases in there. And now we're gonna move on to our next team. Next team is gonna be, and we got some bases. And we'll pull one of these pasty guys close. There he is, a nice pasty running back. Cincinnati Bengals. Home uniforms, black shoes. And I need to run through these a little more position by position. There's our running backs. There's our wide receivers. It's kind of important to go through the positions as I go because sometimes there is an odd team and you get three guards or something, so just counting 11 guys isn't enough. All three guards. And both quarterback defensive back figures. Perfect condition. Hong Kong, black shoe, Cincinnati Bengals. Home dark uniforms, pasty skin tones, but perfect. All right. We're going to set those aside and move on to our next team. And that is going to be a set of white Minnesota Vikings. This set, especially in the black shoe version, when they added the yellow to the stripes, is really a messy looking set. I've never really seen a set of these I thought were well painted. So the big thing with these is trying to find a set that are nice and white. And I've got to tell you, this is probably, I mean, as sloppy as the paintwork is on them, uh, probably as white of a set of it I've ever seen. They're very nice. These guys look like they were never numbered. Oh, well, and I was just talking about it. Three running backs, only one wide receiver. It's an odd set. Had I just counted 11 guys, that wouldn't have really told the story. And that's exactly why we've got to put these guys out this way in positions. The bummer there is, maybe I've got a spare. But is the spare figure that I'm going to have as white as that guy? I don't think so. All right, next we've got Hong Kong Black Shoe Chicago Bears. Nice set. We've seen these a couple of times on Box Reveal episodes. We've got one wide receiver, one running back. Make that two running backs. There's a guard, a guard, a quarterback, tackle, all three guards. That's both tackles. There's our other wide receiver and the other quarterback. Great set. Uh, nicely painted. Perfect condition. No re-glues, no breaks, no race changes. Nice set. Hong Kong Black Shoe Chicago Bears Home Dark Uniforms. Next, we've got Kansas City Chiefs. Again, I'm going to lift a guy up close here. Pasty skin tones. And these are Chiefs in their away uniforms. Let's see if we've got them all. Cross our fingers here. And there's both tackles. We've got both running backs. We've got all three guards. Both wide receivers. Both quarterbacks. Everybody's got their arms. That's what we want to see. Great set. Kansas City Chiefs. Away uniforms. Perfect condition. Beautiful set. 
All right, just randomly reaching in here. You know, this is a set, we've seen this set on at least one prior occasion, but when we did, uh, they had unfortunately been painted. Someone updated the pants on these guys. These are black shoe LA Rams. No Hong Kong stampings on the bottom, pasty skin tones. This is a little bit of a tough set to find in this white uniform. This team actually had a uniform change during the black shoe era. And the away version of this team in the old uniform is tough to find for that reason. On top of which, often when I find them, and we've seen it happen here, the kid who maybe owned them decided to update the uniform by painting the pants yellow. And that might have been cool at the time, but unfortunately, that kind of wrecks the set in today's terms. But there they are, perfect condition. That's a great set. That's a rare, tough set to find, in my opinion. LA Rams, old uniforms, white uniforms. All right, moving on. We'll grab these guys. This just seems to be a mandatory set of the early 1970s. Everybody had these dolphins. And I say it all the time, you see them with or without the stripes on the sleeves. The earliest ones had the orange helmet logos. Where you can sometimes find a, a hog player, which is about as close to owning a hog set of this team as you're going to find. But there they are. Great condition. Those are black shoe, dark home uniform Miami Dolphins. That's a nice set. All right, next up, we're going back to the NFC and we're gonna to go to the NFC West and we're gonna look at some black shoe, white Atlanta Falcons. This is a cool team. You know, this guy, they didn't, looks like they didn't paint the little black stripes between the red on that guy. And we'll bring one of these guys up close for a better look. Nice looking team, cool team. Uh, cooler still if they're all here, and they are. All right, great set. Hong Kong, black shoe, Atlanta Falcons, white uniforms. Nice set. Now we're going to go back to the AFC. And we're going to go to the AFC East. And look at a set of black shoe, dark New York Jets. Now this is a team, because they came with a game, you see a lot in the hog leg version, but you don't see a whole lot in this pasty skin tone black shoe version. That actually, in my mind's eye, makes them a little bit rare. This guy's got a nice hair stuck on him, but nice up close look at a pasty skin tone black shoe. Home uniform, New York Jet. All right, next, we're gonna stay in the AFC East and we're gonna look at some Buffalo Bills. Another set that I consider to be on the rarer side of things. They don't pop up every day. Surprising these aren't more popular, really, because they had O.J. Simpson. This team was coming around in this era. There's a quarterback. I see some broken arms, unfortunately. The running back, there is O.J. Tackle, tackle, tackle. And, well, we've got one wide receiver with broken arms. What the heck? We'll bring him up close and have him be the guy we show. So, bummer that he's got those broken arms, but that's a cool set. Hong Kong Black Shoe, 
Buffalo Bills, pasty skin tones, home uniforms. One guy, two breaks. Ugh. Good luck ever finding the replacement to that guy, I'll tell you that. All right. As long as we're in the AFC East, let's do one more. How about a nice set of New England Patriots? Later version. The earlier ones had the red and blue and white stripes on the sleeves. The later ones, they just went to the one blue stripe. That's what these guys are. Uh, it definitely gives you an idea that these are all later. Wow, weird guy there. Yeah, let's bring him up close. What the heck? Yep, there's just a weirdly uh, disfigured factory guy. He's not broken. He's not re-glued. He's just kind of melted. My deceiver. And what do we have? Oh, we have another weird set. All right, so we've got three tackles back here and only one wide receiver. Might be able to find some replacements for that. Got to have to do a little hunting on that one, but a uh, nice set. Boy, these guys are really bright white, very clean. That I like. All right, let's go back to the NFC. We're down to our last three teams. Back in the NFC, we're going to look at New Orleans Saints. Another little bit of a tough find kind of a team. Black Shoe, New Orleans Saints, away uniform. Once again, the pasty skin tones. Uh, on these, by the way, or as I bring one up close, you can see the socks on this guy. They're just one black sock. On the earlier version, they have three different painted stripes on those socks. Well, good news. All the positions match. That's become an issue today. Uh, and they're in perfect condition. No re-glues, no skin tone changes, nothing. Just a perfect mint team. Great team. Black shoe, New Orleans Saints away uniforms. All right, we've got two more to look at. Next up is Pittsburgh Steelers. Another great black shoe team. I think I'm missing an arm. No, he's not. The away uniform version, really the away uniform version of just about most of the teams are usually the rarer version. Both quarterbacks, everybody's got their arms. Okay, we got both running backs, got both. Oh, are we missing a guy or did I not pick him up? I didn't pick him up. There he is, okay. All there, perfect condition. Pittsburgh Steelers, white away uniforms, black shoes, again, no skin tone changes. No re-glues. Great set. All right, and we're down to one last team. And this one last team is a, a little bit interesting and I think uh, worthy of a certain degree of discussion. We are looking at Denver Broncos white uniforms with the white pants. Now, I've got to tell you that when Mark first sent me photos of these teams, they were sent from a profile, and I thought for sure these were New York Giants from the side. The early Broncos had orange pants, and the uniforms between the Broncos and the Giants are very, very similar for a couple of eras here. And that's a little bit of an unusual team. It would be like a, a late Hong Kong black shoe team. Uh, just to preface that a little bit, the Broncos, the orange pants, 
Now, in real life, the Broncos wore those orange pants on their uniforms from 1968 to 1971. So this team would be made after that. The Haiti era and the transition between the Black Shoe and the Haiti era was probably about 1974. The orange pants did pop up again, by the way, in the late 70s. They wore them a couple games in 78 and then disappeared again forever. But it gives you an idea of the era in which this team had to have been made. Now, I was talking about the Broncos and the Giants. I'm going to show you a little something here. Starting with this guy. Let me... Uh, I'm going to put a nice board out here so you have something to set these on. Okay. First thing I'm going to show you is this black shoe orange pant Bronco. And I'll pluck one of these guys out of here. Now, here's our black shoe white pant Bronco. During that same era, This is what the Giants looked like. There's a black shoe. Now you can see that he's got just one red stripe on the helmet. The Broncos got multiple stripes. And the stripe is a little orangey. But aside from that, the uniforms are incredibly similar between these two teams. And that got me thinking about something else regarding electric football, Broncos, Giants, and uniforms. So I'm just going to keep going here and show you what I'm talking about. Moving on from here, we next went to the Haiti era. Now here we have an early Haiti black shoe Bronco. That then evolved to three stripes on the sock uniform. And this guy you can see is absolutely terrible. I'm still searching for a much better version of this set. And once upon a time, it looks like somebody decided maybe they wanted the orange pants on this guy. So this is a pretty terrible set, but that's another Haiti black shoe, white Bronco. And then last but not least, it then evolved into the Haiti white shoe, white Broncos. So there they all are. Now here's the reason I'm talking about all this stuff. At the same time, let's look at the giant uniforms. Now we already see the black shoe player there. So let's look at a Haiti black shoe white giant. Now he's pretty easy to identify. He's an early one. He's got the two red stripes on the socks, black shoes. And there he is. Later, that uniform evolved. Those socks changed, and they turned into this. So there's a later Haiti black shoe white giant. And just like the Broncos, the white shoe figure was exactly the same as the later black shoe figure, just minus the black shoes. But here's where I've been going with all of this. Then who is this guy? Is that guy a Bronco? Is this guy a Giant? Who is this guy? What team does this represent? Now, when I first got into collecting, I was all about Haiti teams. And once upon a time, I had a guy contact me and he told me that he had a set of all white giants and he would sell them to me. He sent me the photos and I said, those are Broncos. I didn't believe it. So I didn't buy the team. Years and years went by and I'm always hunting for these teams, obviously. Just locally here, I always go around. People ask me, where do you get these teams? I go to all the flea markety type things, all the little thrift shop type places. I go in there, I, I'm always asking, I'm always leaving my number. They always tell me we just had one and we just sold it, but I'm back again. And eventually I end up getting stuff from these folks. And it was at one of those stores a few years back. 
I bought something kind of interesting. It was an old field that was just beat to pieces. But in the field was an envelope. And I've got the envelope. I dug it out. This envelope specifically. And you can see this says National Conference down here. And E, which probably stands for Eastern Conference. And this envelope, which came from the J.C. Penney catalog, had five teams inside. Those five teams were a mix of early Haiti black shoe teams and late Hong Kong black shoe teams. Specifically, the black shoe teams were white eagles with pasty skin tones. Kind of kicking myself I didn't keep that team. I wanted the team with the better skin tones. Now I wish I had them back. Uh, also, there was a set of dark red skins in there uh, with the pasty skin tones. And the Haiti black shoe teams were white cardinals, dark cowboys, and these guys. All the teams were stuck in the original plastic bags. So I have a bag that says Haiti White Giants, and this team was in that bag. So I believe that team is genuine, but it's always been a little bit of a confusing thing. Interested in your opinions about all of this stuff. I greatly appreciate your watching. Uh, I love the feedback on it, and when I get feedback and questions and comments, I love to respond. I love to correspond because this show uh, isn't really about me talking. It's about us talking. I do the show for the people watching it, not for me filming it. So very interested in your thoughts and opinions on that subject. All right, to wrap it up today, we're going to take one last look. We had some Hong Kong black shoe, nice skin tone, white Baltimore Colts. We also had another good skin tone black shoe team, Dark Dallas Cowboys. Also today we saw Dark Oakland Raiders, Dark Chicago Bears, White Atlanta Falcons, White Pittsburgh Steelers, Dark Miami Dolphins, White Kansas City Chiefs, Dark Buffalo Bills. Dark New England Patriots. White Saints. Who am I missing? I am missing a Bengal. Well, I can't forget about these guys. There's my white Denver Bronco for all the talk I did about those. And I'm also missing... A New York Jet. Minnesota Viking. There should be 16. One more. Who don't I have out here? Oh, the Ram. And white LA Rams. Fun episode. Cool episode. Thank you so much for watching. I love doing these shows and I love hearing from you. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like it. It won't make me money, but it will make you informed when new episodes appear. Thanks again for watching and have a great night.